Today I want to show you how to get started with Docker and .NET web applications inside Visual Studio. I will create a new Blazor server web application and I will add Docker support to it. But don't worry, I will also show you how to achieve the same thing outside of Visual Studio using the command line interface. As you will see throughout this video, I'm far from an expert when it comes to Docker. However, this makes me the perfect person to introduce you to this topic, since I understand your feelings and I know what questions you will have. In the end, you'll be able to run and debug a .NET web application from inside a Docker container on your local developer machine. Before we jump into creating a .NET web app and creating a Docker container, let's quickly learn how Docker works and what terms we need to understand. Docker is a virtualization service that allows building, sharing and running of Docker containers. Docker containers share the operating system kernel. That makes it a more lightweight solution compared to virtual machines. Docker containers run in seconds and scale much better. The most significant advantage is that Docker allows you to run your application on your machine within the same environment it will run in production on a managed server or in the cloud. A Docker file contains instructions that are executed line by line to build a Docker image. The docker build command takes a docker file and turns it into an image. A docker image is the result of running the docker build command on a docker file. A docker image contains different layers. You can use a created docker image as the basis in another docker file and build another docker image from it. Docker images can be stored in an image repository for example publicly on Docker Hub or privately in an Azure container registry. A Docker container is an instance of a Docker image. You can run as many identical containers from an image as you need. The docker run command takes a Docker image and creates a Docker container. Now that we understand the most important Docker terms, we are ready to create a Blazor server web application, create a Docker image and run a Docker container. First, you want to install Docker Desktop on your developer machine. Make sure to select the correct installer for the operating system you're using. I use Windows and have downloaded and installed Docker Desktop for Windows. The installation is slightly different depending on the operating system. For Windows 10, I chose WSL2, the Windows subsystem for Linux 2, to run the Docker containers. It's important to know that there are two types of containers. There are Windows containers and Linux containers. We use Linux containers and because I'm running Docker on Windows, I use the WSL2 system to run those Linux containers. Now we're ready to create a .NET web application. For this tutorial, I will create a Blazor server web application. However, you could also create any other type of .NET web application. I create the application from inside Visual Studio and I will show you how convenient its internal Docker tooling is. After that, I will also show you how to create Docker images and how to run Docker containers from the command line. The next step is creating a Docker file. In Visual Studio, we can use the context menu on the project and select Docker support in the add sub menu. We select Linux as the container operating system, Docker file as the container build type and use the default container image distro. For the Docker build context, make sure to select the subfolder of the Blazor server project and not the root folder of the solution. Otherwise, the generated paths might not work when executing the Docker file. When we press the OK button on the dialog, Visual Studio generates a Docker file as a root file of the Blazor server application project. The Docker file contains four stages. A Docker stage starts with the from keyword where we define the base image. Again, I'm not a Docker expert. But that's the beauty of using Visual Studio when working with Docker. 
it works out of the box. Still, let's quickly see what we can understand from the generated Docker file. The first stage defines that the app will work based on an ASP.NET Core base image, uses an app directory, and exposes the 8080 and 8081 ports. The second stage uses a base image which contains the .NET SDK and is used to execute the .NET restore and .NET build commands to compile the web application. The third stage is based on the second stage, which is identified by its name. It uses the .NET publish command to create the artifacts required for running the web application. The fourth and last stage is based on the first stage and it executes the .NET command with the publish.NET DLL file as its argument for running the application. If you work with a different IDE or don't want to create the Blazor server application or the Docker file by yourself, check out the link in the video description to a GitHub repository where you will find the project and the Docker file. Running the application inside the Docker container is as simple as it gets when using Visual Studio. All we need to do is press F5 and the application runs inside a Docker container. And the best part is that we can use the debugger just like in a regular non-containerized.NET application. Let's open the counter component and set a breakpoint in the increment count method. In the browser, we navigate to the counter page and press the click me button. Visual Studio pauses the execution of the application and we can use the debugger similar to non-containerized applications. How does that work? When using the Docker support tooling in Visual Studio, not only did we get a Docker file, we also have an additional configuration in the launch settings.json file, which is selected by default when running the application using the F5 shortcut or the button in Visual Studio's toolbar. Another change made by the tooling is the additional package reference in the project file to the microsoft.visualstudio.azure.containers.tools.target package. This package is responsible for building the Docker image and creating a Docker container when we run the application in Visual Studio. When we open Docker Desktop, we see the image created by Visual Studio tagged with the name of the project, followed by a colon and dev. Before we look into creating Docker images and running Docker containers from those images outside of Visual Studio, let me show you one more thing. In the view menu in the other windows submenu, we can find a containers view. This container view provides us with additional information about the Docker containers available on our machine. For example, we get access to the log files, the environment variables, labels, ports, volumes, and detailed information about the Docker container. It's a helpful tool that provides additional information and lets you manage the Docker container without leaving Visual Studio. That was a lot of Visual Studio, but now let's see how to achieve the same thing, but outside of Visual Studio using the command line interface. We will use the same project with the existing Docker file. If you want to create the project outside of Visual Studio, you will have to create a Docker file yourself. Again, take a look at the GitHub repository linked in the video description. Open a terminal and navigate into the Blazor server application folder. Make sure to navigate to the root path of the solution. Now the first step is building an image from the application. On the CLI, we use the docker build command. To make it easy to identify the correct image, we use the dash t argument and provide a name for the image. As the last argument, we need to specify the location of the docker file. In this case, we use the name of the project to specify the path of the Blazor server application inside its solution folder. The execution of the command can take a few seconds. However, in my case, where I previously built the image with Visual Studio, you can see that many steps are cached 
and therefore the execution completes almost instantly. Now, when we open Docker Desktop, we don't see anything new. The reason is that we only created a Docker image so far, and Docker Desktop shows all the Docker containers running on my machine. However, we can use the docker image ls command in the terminal to see all the available docker images. As you can see, the docker image with the name we provided when creating the image shows up. The created column helps us find the most recent docker image if we have already many images on the same machine. The next step is running a container based on the image we just created. We use the docker run command. We also need to provide a local port for the exposed ports of the docker image. In this case, we provide a local port for the 8080 and the 8081 ports. The last argument of the command identifies the docker image. Here, we use the name we defined when running the docker image command. When the docker container is started, we see the console output in the terminal. When we open Docker Desktop, we see a new container. We didn't provide a name for the container, therefore Docker chose a randomly generated name. However, we see the image, the status and the port mapping. When we open a browser at the port mapped to the exposed 8080 port, the Blazor server application will load. If you want to learn more about Blazor development, C Sharp or .NET in general, I highly recommend checking out my course on Zero Two Mastery, which contains a newly added section about Blazor development. You'll find a link down in the video description, as well as a discount code. And please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to learn more about .NET development, and I will see you in the next video.